Inside the stories that affect you. This is Inside Keloland. Good evening. Life isn't always easy, no matter your age. Who you surround yourself with can make a world of difference, especially for kids. On tonight's Inside Keloland, we visit with several organizations that focus on inspiring children and helping them lead successful lives. Well, it's a time of year many people are anxiously waiting for Girl Scout cookie sales, but there's much more to this long-standing tradition than just cookies. Joining us tonight to talk about the benefits of joining Girl Scouts is Stacy Andernock with Girl Scout Dakota Horizons and Katie from Troop 40038. Thanks for joining us for Inside Keloland. Thanks for having us. Well, let's talk first about how, how Girl Scouts have changed through the years. Tell us about that. How, it's, how, it's what Girl Scouts is, are for today's. Yeah. We talk a lot at Girl Scouts about moving at the speed of girl mm -hmm. and making sure that we're relevant for today's girl. And so while we still have the traditional camps and building campfires and canoeing um, and the badge work, we've really progressed with that. Uh, we had several new badges released this past summer in the areas of uh, outdoor hiking, like high adventure, um, including snowshoeing, um, and also in cybersecurity. So girls mm. are getting together and they're they're rescuing hacked moon colonies. Wow. Um, so really working to foster that interest in areas like STEM, outdoors, life skills, and entrepreneurship. And how is membership going? Is it still growing? And yeah, it is. You know, we're we're really successful in the fact of uh, we've got moms who want their daughters to be Girl Scouts or mm -hmm. grandma was a Girl Scout. But also many girls are just looking for that place to fit in. And we provide a, a safe all-girl environment that allows them to explore their interests. And, and even if they fail, they have that sisterhood to help lift them up and encourage them to try again. Mm -hmm. And Katie, how long have you been a Girl Scout now? About five or six years. I joined when I was in kindergarten. Wow. What do, you, what do you like about it? I like earning badges and going camping. Um, I also like that we get to do a lot of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. talk, us about, uh, talk to us about your, the, your vest there and, and some of the badges you've earned there. Well, I've earned the babysitting badge, which we learned about like the safety for like kids. And for our test, we actually babysitted a few kids for an hour to see how we would handle. Um, we did the new cuisines badge, which is where we learned, which we did cooking. And last year we did a few other new cuisine badges too. Last, just last month we went to Yankton and earned our archery badge where we learned out parts of the arrow, safety with archery, and we actually, actually practiced them too. Wow. So what's your favorite part about Girl Scouts? Um, probably camping and making new friends at, girl, at other Girl Scout camps. Yeah, I imagine you do make a, quite a few fr new friends as far as uh, other than just being at school, right? Yeah, you are you. Uh, you make a lot of friends at Girl Scout camps, and even when you go on just journeys, you get to bond with your Girl Scout troop members more. Wow! And of course, later this week, Girl Scout Scouts uh, Girl Scout cookie sales begin. Tell us about that now. Well, we're really excited. Of course, it's an annual tradition. Everybody looks forward to those Girl Scout cookies. Um, we have a new cookie this year, the Lemon Ups. It's a lemon flavored cookie. Um, and so very highly anticipated. We've gotten some great reviews. And that adds to our regular lineup of our, our tag-alongs, our Samoas, um, the do -si dos which are like a peanut butter sandwich, the ever-popular Thin Mint. Um, a few years ago, we came out with the Girl Scout S'more cookie with that mm. camp theme. And, of course, we have our certified gluten-free cookie, the Toffee Tastic. Um, and that has gained popularity as well over the last few years. Um, so we're really excited to present this lineup and have girls all across our council um, out beginning to work this program. But um, when we talk about Girl Scout cookies, we really encourage consumers to think outside the box. Um, and to realize that when they purchase that box of cookies, it's about more than the treat that they're getting. It's about the experiences that they're helping these girls have. Mm -hmm. I noticed they put the uh, Girl Scout cookies way out of my reach of my <laughs> arm. So uh, unfortunately, that's, that's what we have to deal with. But uh, yeah, talk about what kind of skills they do learn by being uh, yeah. uh, Girl Scout You know, the program sales. itself instills five really crucial skills for girls. And it's along the lines of entrepreneurship and helping to build those female leaders of tomorrow. So... They're learning things like money management and people skills. Um, they're learning business ethics. They're learning how to count their inventory and um, set goals and, and reach those goals. So girls are coming out with those outcomes as well. But when they're setting their goals, they're making plans. And so for Girl Scouts like Katie, um, the plan might be to go to camp. And so she knows how many boxes of cookies she needs to sell to go to camp. Um, other Girl Scout troops may be doing things like working on community action projects 
on their higher wards. So whether they are going to a local humane shelter or a humane society and making dog toys or dog treats, or they're uh, collecting food or doing a food drive, um, making mittens for kids in schools who don't have mittens, the proceeds that they're earning from that box of cookies is being reinvested into our community as well as building leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And Katie, do you, what's your, what is your sales pitch as far as selling um, Girl Scout cookies? You go, do you go door to door a lot then? Yeah, I'm working with my little sister Millie this year, and our goal is to reach a thousand boxes to turn a lot of money for both of our troops. Wow! And 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 how do you go about to what do you how do you sell your your cookies to people then? We go door to door, and we have a lot of customers that we've sold cookies to over the years. So they really like when they when we come door to door. So you have pretty much of a built-in customer base <laughs> that, that you've earned throughout the years. Then, what are, what are your favorite Girl Scout cookies? I like all the Girl Scout cookies, but my favorite is the Thin Mint because I just really like the flavor of it. Mm -hmm. And people can buy; they don't have to order them. They can buy buy them right off right away, right? Yeah. Uh, several years ago, we went to a direct sale, which means mm -hmm. that the Girl Scouts have the cookies in hand. You might see a Girl Scout in your neighborhood pulling a wagon of cookies and knocking on doors. Um, but another really popular thing is Girl Scout cookie booths. And we're really fortunate to have great community partners like Walmart and Ace Hardware who allow Girl Scouts to come and set up a booth in, in their store and you know sell them to their customers. This is a really safe way for girls mm -hmm. to sell cookies. Um, and it's a really popular way because it's meeting the customer where they're at. Um, what's really cool about it is we have actually a, an app that you can download on your phone. And if you type in your zip code, it will tell you when there are Girl Scout cookies in your area. Mm. So if you're driving past an Ace Hardware, it'll notify you that there are cookies within 0.2 miles wow. um, and you can stop. Or if you don't want that notification, um, you can just go looking on your own and it'll populate all the booths that Girl Scout cookies are at at that time in your location. Um, so that's a really great asset for those girls to grow their business. Um, we also are able to offer girls a digital store. So Girl Scouts can go into an online platform. They can set up their own website. They can upload a video or a photo of themselves, put their goal in there and track their goal in there, and then send email out to various customers. So if grandma or grandpa live in another state, um, they don't have to wait for the granddaughter to get there. They can order it through mm -hmm. her digital store and have it shipped right to their door. Mm -hmm. um, and just another marketing opportunity and asset for the girls to use. If a girl wants to join Girl Scouts, how do they go about doing that? You just head over to our website, gsdakotahorizons.org. Uh, you can definitely check it out. Now's a great time to join. Our, our troops are forming. Our troops are getting started for the year, but um, you're not too far behind. You can jump right in and be part of the cookie program and get those five skills and continue on through summer mm -hmm. into summer camp and all the other programs. And, and I was surprised to learn that you could be a Girl Scout all the way through high school. Yes. Tell me about that. Yes. How to so a girl can join when she is going into kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, she can go all the way through graduating in high school. And we have several girls that do that. And these girls are doing incredible things, whether it be uh, we had girls travel to China. Mm -hmm. um, we have had girls go to Savannah, Georgia. We have had girls complete the Gold Award, which is the highest award a girl can receive. And it's a community impact award. And they're doing really incredible things in our communities all throughout our council. Mm -hmm. Well, Katie, what do you have planned for Girl Scouts this coming year then? Um, we'll probably do more journeys, earn more badges. Um, I am really excited for a cookie for um, February 21st when we start selling cookies because I like selling cookies to my grandparents because there's always because they're always a great customer every year. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet you, I bet you a lot of people are good customers for you. You, you seem like a very good salesperson as far as selling Girl Scout cookies. Well, thank you both for joining us for Inside Kelloland. And we're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll introduce you to one of this year's Avera Tradition of Caring recipients. Stay with us. Welcome back to Inside Kelloland. The Kelloland Media Group serves a community in various ways throughout the year. One of our most notable programs is Avera Tradition of Caring. For more than 20 years, we've been supporting local organizations with free airtime. One of this year's recipients is Lutheran Social Services of South Dakota. Now joining us today to share a little bit about what this organization has to offer is Michelle Madsen and Deanne Conrad. Thank you for joining us for are Inside Kelloland. Thank you. I think we'll start with you first. Tell us what, uh, if people are not familiar with Lutheran Social Services, what is that program and what is it all about? Sure. Um, LSS is a statewide human services organization that 
Um, in the coming year, we'll celebrate 100 years of service wow. in South Dakota. And um, we provide many, many needed services across the state. Um, the program that I work with is called the Mentoring Program. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we primarily work with children in the community and match them with caring adult volunteers who serve as their mentors, both in school and out of school. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about uh, not just in the Sioux Falls area, but in several, several school districts, right? right? Yes, we are in all public school districts in Lincoln and Minnehaha County and uh, Flandreau as well. Mm -hmm. And what's been the response to that program? It's been wonderful. Um, we started working with the school district in 2001. It was previously a program that the United Way did, and mm -hmm. they continue to be um, a great partner in this work. Um, we have grown the program to 1,200 volunteer mm -hmm. mentors that meet with students every week and um, just have great experiences and um, long-term relationships and a lot of fun. Sure. Too. Sounds like it. Yeah. And Deanne Conrad is one of those 1,200 uh, volunteer mentors. When did you, st you've been doing this for quite a while now. Yeah, I must have started. If you, if LSS started in 2001, it yeah. was either that year or the year after that I started um, with my first student. I've had four students over those 18 or 19 years um, that I've met early on in their education and then followed them through. Um, either in one case I met a student at sixth grade and followed him through. Mm -hmm. uh, in other cases I've uh, joined a student in kindergarten and my current student is a fifth grader. So um, she's very eager to make sure I'm coming to middle school next year with her. Oh, so wow. I'll relive those middle school years once again. <laughs> sure. Well, what's it like to have a typical mentoring session with your students? Um, you know, we meet over the lunch period over, um, you know, have she's having school lunch. I'll either have school lunch or I'll bring lunch um, for myself, brown bag it. Um, we sit, we talk for the first couple of minutes as we're eating. Um, and then we usually head to the game closet and try to find something um, that piques our interests. Uh, both of us are quite competitive, so we like those <laughs> games where there's a little competition. Although um, many days too, just we've we've identified that we really can find some relaxing quality time by coloring or doing crafts and um, just hanging out together. Mm -hmm. So um, she is active in, in dance and bowling and a variety of different things in the community. So I like to, to touch base with her and find out how her week has gone in terms of maybe when she has a dance competition coming up or something along that line. So yeah. it's really a, a great experience and really it provides as much value for me as I hope that it does provide for her as well. Yeah, well, yeah what do you get out of it personally? I think I get a better understanding of life outside my own home. Um, our home does not look like everybody else's home in the city of, of Sioux Falls. Uh, and I don't mean by structure, but by family makeup and just what's important to people, um, you know, ethnicity, diversity along that line. And so I'm really able to connect with someone and develop a friendship that uh, provides me a greater understanding of what it is that kids are going through. I have my own kids mm -hmm. that age, um, and sometimes what what my mentee and I talk about, I'll go home and say, okay, now what do you think about this? <laughs> um, you know, so it sort of prompts uh, additional questions for me as a mom, um, but it's just really great to be um, someone's friend on, the, on a different level than you are as a parent, mm -hmm. so. Um, I really, really enjoy the experience every week to to go and see her and see what's new in her life. Mm -hmm. And Deanne mentors in school, but there's also a mentoring program beyond the school walls. Tell yes. us about that. Yes. Um, earlier this year, LSS um, now has what was formerly known as Big Brothers Big Sisters. Mm -hmm. um, we've rebranded it to the LSS Climb program. And in that program, volunteers can meet with students, age our kids, ages 7 to 14, um, in the community. So they can go and... Um, go bowling, um, go to a movie together, just eat um, eat a meal together at a restaurant and give kids those experiences that they might not otherwise have. Um, and LSS employs case managers that will help you as a volunteer 
as well as the family um, through the program and ensure everything goes well. great. How are the mentors matched with their, their students? Um, in our school-based program, we work primarily with school counselors, mm -hmm. and they are the ones who um, know the students' social and emotional needs, and the ones who would benefit from having a mentor the most are who want to have a mentor the most. There are kids who ask their counselor every week, can I get a mentor, can I get a mentor? Mm. Um, and then in our community-based program, the LSS staff works with the volunteers and does the interview process and also interviews the kids and their parent or guardians to see what they want and then makes matches based off of that information. What does it take to be a good mentor, would you say? Oh, I think time is important. You have to um, be there for that student. It's just important to um, show up and um, come as you are. Kids are really good and perceptive of seeing, um, you know, who's real and who's not. And um, it's fun, too. Just be, be ready to have some fun and open up your heart and um, be open to the experience. Yeah. Deanne, what would you say somebody who somebody who's thinking about becoming a mentor? What would you advise them? Well, like Michelle said, we're always looking for mm -hmm. mentors for students. Um, you know, we could all use somebody to come alongside us at some point in our life. And so those um, people who might be thinking about it, um, it really is just that that devotion to time, one day a week. Um, and for me, it's about forty minutes of my lunch period. I can head over to the school get back um, sit, sitting in my office again um, in one hour's time. So it's not a huge commitment for me, mm -hmm. um, but yet you do have to be um, committed to the fact that you're gonna get there once a week. Sometimes we flip days where I might have a meeting, it's not gonna work. I just email her teacher, say, hey, can you let her know that I'll be here, t I'll be there tomorrow instead. Um, and we connect that way. And so really I think it's just an open mind and that 40, 50 minutes once yeah. a week. Um, and you know, they always say you'll get more out of it than you give and that is mm -hmm. so true. It's, it's incredibly rewarding um, and not hard to do at all. You don't yeah. need any skill. Yeah. You just need to show up. Well, Michelle, give us a quickly an idea how sure. people want to become mentors. How do they go about doing yeah. that? Yeah, um, the easiest thing is to go to the LSS website, and you can apply online, mm -hmm. and then we will process your application and get in touch with training that everyone's required to go through, and then you'll be ready to go. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us for Inside yeah. Kelloland. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. And we're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. Inside Kelloland we will be right back. Welcome back to Inside Kelloland. Macross and Boys Ranch is another winner of this year's Avera Tradition of Caring Grant. Joining us to share us how Macrossans is helping kids is Executive Director Brian Rogiers. Thanks for joining us, Brian. Yeah, thank you, Perry. Glad to be here. Well, people aren't familiar with the Macross and Boys Ranch. Tell us what it is all about. Well, you know, Macrossans has been in existence now for 64 years. Mm -hmm. um, it's out there where I-29 and 90 uh, crisscross there. Um, you know, the town's growing out towards us, but, <laughs> but it's very much uh, a real ranch. We have horses, we have a llama, we have donkeys, we have, you know, and the kids work with the animals. Yeah, that's all about the part of the equine therapy that's, that, that's offered there at Macrossan. Yes, we uh, not only do the kids show horses at the fairs, um, and uh, goes go to parades, etc. We do sleigh rides and wagon rides around the community for different groups. But they actually participate in groups uh, uh, with actual equine therapy. One of the things that I've learned, I was a farm kid, but I, I didn't know a lot about horses and the connection with kids until I came to Macrossan. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And kids a lot of times will learn to build a trusting relationship with that large animal before they can transfer that over to adults sure. after what they've been through sure. before they got to us. Sure, and of course you were saying that this year the, the, the snow has been, been plentiful enough where they can actually do those sleigh rides <laughs> yeah. in the winter sometimes time. we have to transfer over to <laughs> wagon rides, but this year there's been snow. <laughs> well, who, who stays, uh, who lives at Macross and Boys Ranch? You know, we have uh, kids that come to us from uh, uh, many different ways. Um, school districts can place kids directly at Macrossans, um, Department of Social Services, uh, also the Department of Corrections, and then also private um, placements as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
people call us up or else they go through one of those uh, entities that I mentioned. Um, and then there's a, there's a process, you know, where we uh, try to make sure that it's a good match for these kids because they do not need another uh, failure in their life. So we want to make sure that we can provide the care that they're going to need. Mm -hmm. Now, new at the McCrossin Boys Ranch is, is a visitor center, right? Yes. Tell us um, about that. How did that come about? Yeah, Max? it's uh, it's really, uh, if you want to know about McCrossin's and you've never been there before, mm -hmm. it's a perfect place to come to. It's like a museum of the entire history of McCrossin's. We also have meeting space there where groups can come in from outside. Tour groups come through. Um, we've even kind of tailored a little bit of it towards uh, school-age kids, too. We have a, a worksheet that they have to answer. There's interactive displays. We actually have a life-size uh, Belgian draft horse uh, replica in there as well. And so uh, you can get a feel for actually how big they really are um, by standing next to that. <laughs> and anybody can come out and see that, right? Absolutely, and, and we encourage alumni to come out too, because mm -hmm. we have uh, archives, um, a whole room of archives that go way back to the beginning of Macrosses with pictures and, and different articles so that um, if they were there many, many years ago, they can still come back and and maybe find a picture or an article that they were uh, highlighted in. Yeah. Do a lot of the alumni do come back then? And you know, it's just gotten started, so we've had some of that. Um, you know, it, it's, I think this summer we're gonna see a lot more activity there uh, because it is brand new. We do have some billboards now out on uh, 29 and 90, and uh, we're hoping people will just stop by. Mm -hmm. And another thing I learned about Macross and Boys Ranch, you actually have your own uh, uh, school there. Yes, we do. I think that's something a lot of people don't know, that mm -hmm. we actually have an accredited school right on our campus. Kids can graduate from Macrossan High School. Uh, many of our boys, when they come to us, they're, they're quite far behind in mm -hmm. school. Uh, we have smaller classrooms, and we can help them catch up. And I can tell you, one of the most touching moments for me and for our staff each uh, time it happens is, is a graduation ceremony because there are many of our boys who are the first ever in their family tree mm -hmm. to graduate uh, from high school. So there's tears of joy um, from the staff. Uh, and if there is family that can come and be a part of that, uh, the kids are so proud. And, and we don't cut it short um, with how we do it either. It's caps, it's yeah, gowns, it's sure. the whole thing, even if it's two kids. And you're even looking at expanding the, the high school, right? Yes, we are. We have a capital campaign through the chamber coming up. Uh, our first time ever uh, being engaged in that process. So we're very excited because we're going to be able to make uh, our school a more modern facility, add some classroom space, um, some labs for our science rooms. Um, and, uh, and then we're also um, going to be able to add a running track to, uh, to our campus. Wow. Um, a lot of people don't know, too, that we have actually uh, two sports that we participate in the Corn Belt Conference, so wow. track and cross sure. country at, yeah. at Macrossan. So. Well, Brian, thank you for joining us and sharing us the story about Macrossan Boys Ranch. I appreciate it. Thank and you. we're going to take a quick break. Stay with us inside Kelloland. We'll be right back. You can find out more about today's topics online at Kelloland.com. Just click on the Inside Kelloland section. Join us every Sunday following the 10 o'clock news here on Kelloland TV.